This video introduces the basics of gradient descent. In function approximation, we are given some noisy data points that come from an unknown target function f. Our aim is to find an approximation f hat, based on the data, to recover the structure of the unknown function. To do so, we often parameterize our function by some weights w. We can then define a loss function L that measures how good our approximation performs on the given dataset D. The task of finding a good approximation can then be equally formulated as finding the set of weights W that minimizes the loss function. For some choices of loss and F hat, there actually exists a closed form solution. This means that there is a formula where we can just plug in the values from our dataset to get the answer. However, this is not always possible. In this video, we will introduce you to a simple algorithm that can find a good set of weights, even if there is no closed form solution. To start, let us look at this problem a bit differently. Assume our function consists of a single weight value w. We plot all possible weight values w on the horizontal axis, and the loss with respect to that weight on the vertical axis. What we aim to find is the weight w star that minimizes the loss. Given some initial guess, the idea of gradient descent is to iteratively update the guess to approach this optimal solution over time. To do so we can look at the slope of the loss. This is given by the gradient of the loss with respect to the weight. Note that this gradient gives us a local linear approximation to the unknown loss surface. If the weight is not just a single value, but a whole vector, then we can look analogously at the multidimensional loss surface. Here, the gradient at a given point points in the direction of the steepest ascent, that is, the direction in which the loss increases the most. If we, therefore, take a step in the negative direction of the gradient, we can decrease the loss. Iterating this procedure, we can improve our estimate over time. Formally, we update every weight based on the partial derivative of the loss with respect to that weight. Here, we introduce a multiplicative factor alpha to the update, which is a hyperparameter called the learning rate. Let us go back to a case where we aim to optimize a single parameter w. Consider the following initial guess. What might be the issue here? Pause the video and think for yourself how gradient descent would update this guess. Gradient descent updates the guess based on the local slope in the direction where the loss gets smaller. In the given example the update would therefore head left until we reach the local optima. This is however not the global optima that we would like to have. This is one of the main limitations of gradient descent, as we are only guaranteed to reach a local optima. Note that in general, a loss function can have many local minima and not just two as shown here. It might therefore make sense to try multiple different initializations. Only in the case that our loss surface is convex, this is not an issue since any local optima will coincide with the global optima. Let us take back our formula for the update and discuss the role of the newly introduced hyperparameter alpha. If we choose a too small alpha, we will hardly make any progress and the optimization will take very long to converge. On the other hand, if we choose a too large alpha, we might jump over our target. Even worse, a too large value for alpha can lead to divergence as the slope gets steeper and the updates larger and larger. It is therefore vital to choose an adequate learning rate alpha. One way to go about it is to choose alpha based on the curvature of the loss function. If we take alpha as the inverse of the second derivative, this is known as Newton's method for optimization. However, evaluating the inverse of the second derivative is computationally expensive for large-scale problems. Let us go back to the plot with which we started that visualizes the data. Updating our parameters with respect to the gradient of the loss involves the calculation of the loss over the whole dataset. This can become very costly if the dataset is large, as this calculation has to be done for every update. To resolve this we can split the dataset into subsets of equal size and use these subsets of data to estimate the gradient. Such subsets are also referred to as minibatches. Since we split the data randomly, this approach is called stochastic gradient descent or SGD in short. Let us summarize the main insights of this video. We are given an optimization problem where we aim to find the optimum with respect to a parameter vector of weights w. For many problems, we cannot write down a formula for the weights directly. Gradient descent gives an iterative numerical procedure to approach a local optimum. 
To do so, we update an estimate in the direction of steepest descent, which is given by the negative local gradient. Formally, this can be written like this. Note that this only requires the loss function to be differentiable with respect to the parameters w. Important here is the choice of the initial guess as well as the choice of the learning rate alpha. Thanks for watching this video.